Over the last several weeks and months, we have been fortunate enough to work with clients who have bought homes in locations other than Fort Collins. In Loveland, Johnstown, I bought another rental in Severance, Wellington. We have worked with clients really all over Northern Colorado. And a few of our clients have actually recently when they found and bought a home in Loveland specifically, made a comment to me of, I never thought I was going to end up in Loveland when originally I was looking at Fort Collins and or Windsor. So that being said, today's video, we are going to talk to you guys about alternate towns in Northern Colorado to consider when moving to Fort Collins or Northern Colorado. And we're gonna hit on a pro and con for each one, really drive through. But if any of you have any questions or want more information about specific towns in Northern Colorado, we here at Sukup Real Estate Services have, have a great team with information and knowledge really all across Northern Colorado from Greeley to Windsor, Severance, Timnath, Wellington, Red Feather, you name it, we have done deals there and would love to be a resource for you. What's up everybody? My name is Patrick Sukup with Sukup Real Estate Services here in Fort Collins, Colorado. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if what you're looking at learning is everything Northern Colorado and Fort Collins. And at the end of the video, if you've enjoyed the content, please give it a thumbs up, maybe comment, engage, share it with your friends. And as much as we like making these real estate videos, we are licensed real estate brokers in the state of Colorado. So if you were looking at buying, selling, or investing, please give us a call, text, or email. Without any further delay, let's jump into alternate towns in Northern Colorado. All right, we're gonna start with Fort Collins. This is really the behemoth of Northern Colorado. The most economic opportunities, your most restaurants per, you know, the per person, per not per, per capita, but the most restaurants options for an individual and again, has a strong backbone in Colorado State University and historic Old Town Square. Now, the con here is, going to be that it is probably one of the most expensive towns that you will explore in Northern Colorado. It will not be as expensive as a median home sales price in Timnath, Colorado, but in comparison, you can definitely expect to spend a premium if you want to be in Fort Collins, Colorado. I don't think that Fort Collins has that same address premium as maybe Boulder does yet, but it is absolutely getting there. All right, and Timnath, my uncle is the mayor of Timnath, Colorado. You could consider that a pro or a con. You're gonna have to talk to him about that. But uh, a pro is it is a small growing community with a lot to offer and a lot of character building to come. Over the last 10 years, it is one of the fastest growing communities in all of America, let alone Colorado, going from 500 people to 5,000 people. Now, one of the cons is it is basically a flat land with no mature landscape, some in downtown Timnath, which is just a blink of an eye road down the middle of town, but very little minimal mature landscaping. And as I mentioned in my first town in Fort Collins, it is definitely one of the most expensive towns as a medium price in Northern Colorado. As we spoke, Loveland, Colorado has been getting some love from my clients recently. We actually just as of today went under contract on another property in Loveland, Colorado. And one of the pros is the outdoor recreation of Loveland, Colorado and its proximity to Rocky Mountain National Park and Estes Park. This community is definitely a very artsy and culture community with a focus on outdoors and its intentionality behind that. Now, one of the cons, and I definitely would say areas of Loveland are phenomenal as far as zoning goes and city planning and layout, but you can definitely get into older parts of Loveland along US 34 to US 287, where you might have a grocery next to a house, next to an office building, all within you know 
100, 200 feet of each other, which really just doesn't give this welcoming community vibe, but it just seems mismatched in different areas. And there is some love and redevelopment that needs to happen in Loveland, which is happening. There is a lot of money going into Loveland right now as developers are seeing opportunities for the future growth of Loveland. So long-term, I think this is all going to be fixed and great opportunity for those looking at Loveland. Wellington, Colorado. My assistant bought a house there almost a year ago or just about a year ago now, and she loves it. I've got a good friend who bought a horse property, 57 acres out in Wellington, and it is definitely a community feel. Uh, I would say individuals are closer. It's a smaller town. I would say it's more rural that if that's what your vibe is and that's what you're going for, that will align with those values and what you're looking for. Now, as a con, one of the things that my assistant is definitely complaining about is the utility fees are about three times what they used to be because the water sanitation facility is not built for the population that Wellington currently has and is expected to have. Now, this will be sorted out in the coming years. They will build a water treatment facility that will allow for the current population as well as the growing population of Wellington, Colorado. But it's definitely something that to expect if you are moving into Wellington is high utility fees, specifically water. Windsor, Colorado, probably one of my favorite growing communities, right around 30,000 people. My sister bought a house there here just a few years ago and uh, she loves it there. She does all of the recreational sports and all of, she actually teaches in Greeley, but lives in Windsor and they spend a lot of time in Windsor. There's a lot of young families. It is a close knit community. Eastman Park is phenomenal for children's activities and sports and recreation. Windsor Lake is great to walk around, concerts, uh, and then downtown Windsor has a lot to offer and is growing with a lot of cool new restaurant opportunities coming down the pipeline. Now, as a con, I have been recently going to my nephew's games, which is in Legends Park, which is this world-class baseball facility and outdoor sports facility that's being built in East Windsor. This is really just north, south of Severance, but from my house on south in Southeast Fort Collins to my nephew's game, which is about seven miles, where they, they play at about 5.30 every Thursday night, it takes me 35 minutes to get to his games, which is just excruciating. And I'll tell you why. As you drive along Carpenter Road, uh, I can't think of the road name right now, but Carpenter Road, which turns into uh, Main Street in Windsor, you come along two massive bottlenecks. Right around County Road 13, or County Road 17, excuse me, we are turning off into Rain Dance, which is this massive, massive community that's being built. So you're coming along Main Street and you have this bottleneck. People are turning off into Rain Dance, coming off of uh, I-25 and big bottleneck there. You get through that bottleneck and then you get into old, you know, Main Town, Windsor on Main Street and you get next to their high school and middle school and it bottlenecks again. It's a one lane road east and west. And for a town of 30,000 people, it should not take me 35 minutes to get seven miles. No way, no how, traffic in Windsor needs to be addressed. And they are widening the roads. I just saw they're doing, they, they approved about a $2 million budget, I believe, two, $2 million or $20 million, I can't think of it. But they are addressing the problem, but it is a pain in the ass right now, I can tell you that. So Windsor, con, traffic. Crazy. Greeley, Colorado. I bought a triplex there in 2021, right across the university on 8th Avenue, across the College of Economics. And I thought this was a home run investment because, well, heck, if you bought a triplex across the street from Colorado State University, you are sitting on a gold mine. Well, little did I know that this road is definitely 
quite a bit less desirable than I would have expected. It has been a very strong investment. And I think in years to come, this area will see huge renovation and updating as there are multi-million dollar, multi-story buildings and developments just happening a couple blocks to the north of my property. But Greeley is still this growing, changing community that has older homes that need some love. And the pro for Greeley is that it has the University of Northern Colorado and a very strong economy. But on the flip side, that economy is driven by oil and gas. It rides or dies with oil and gas. So Greeley, Colorado, definitely a cool place, much more affordable. It was a much more affordable triplex. It has got the university as its backbone, but cons, it is ride or die on oil and gas. Also, the smell of Greeley, JBS, is a massive, massive feedlot, and you can smell Greeley for miles. And if you talk to anybody in Greeley, what's one thing that they're gonna say that they don't miss if they move out? The smell. All right, and our last community that we're going to talk to actually just bought a house with a client in Johnstown and Timnath, or sorry, Thompson Valley Ranch. This is a really cool community. Oakwood Homes does a really great job, huge, massive. US 34 that cuts in half Loveland on the north and Johnstown on the south has really benefited the town of Johnstown. It has Shields, uh, Liberty Firearms, lots of different eateries and restaurants, and then this really growing community. But I would say one of the cons about Johnstown is it's still really a bedroom community. There's no real identity or economy to speak of that drives the growth of this area. So it needs to find an identity, but really close, you're closer to I you're close to I-25 and to Denver. You're still very close to Loveland and Fort Collins. So there's some really good location features and Greeley, if like you are my, my sister who is teaching in Greeley, Johnstown's not a bad option. Or if you're teaching in Fort Collins and want a more affordable place, Johnstown's a great option. So don't have much bad things to say about Johnstown besides it doesn't have a, a great identity right now. And it's kind of this mismatched community that's got old Johnstown and then US 34 Johnstown and the growth. I can tell you one thing I'm super excited about coming soon is a Bucky's, and it is this huge 200,000 square foot gas station and I can't wait to explore what that looks like. So there you have it. Some communities in Northern Colorado that are not named Fort Collins that you might entertain if Fort Collins either is too expensive for you, doesn't fit your vibe. And those are just some of the communities that I've thought of. We didn't t talk about Severance or Red Feather or Evans or Alts or Eaton. These are different communities that are really a part of Northern Colorado that are growing, exciting, and have cool opportunities. So if you have any questions specifically on any of the communities that we spoke about, or any of the ones that we didn't talk about, definitely, again, feel free to call me, email, email me, text me, whatever you're comfortable with. I appreciate you guys watching, and until next time, guys, take care.